Hello, and welcome back to The Coachman. Uh, for today, we're going to be heading over to Scotland and um, reading a pretty interesting story um, that I think is uh, it's different, you know. For, for me, it was very different, but um, something that I was like, oh, okay, cool. And it's actually called The Black Bull of Norway, and it's by Joseph Jacobs. In Norway... Long time ago, there lived a certain lady, and she had three daughters. The oldest of them said to her mother, Mother, bake me a bannock and roast me a cow, for I'm going away to seek my fortune. Her mother did so, and the daughter went away to an old witch washerwife and told her purpose. The old wife bade her to stay that day and look out of her back door and see what she could see. She saw nothing the first day. The second day, she did the same and saw nothing. On the third day, she looked again and saw a coach and six coming uh, coming along the road. She ran in and told the old wife what she had saw. Well, quoth the old woman, yon's for you. So they took her into the coach and galloped off. The second daughter next day, next says to the Mar mother, Mother, make me a bannock and roast me a collop, for I'm coming away to seek my fortune. Her mother did so, and away she went to the old wife, as her sister had done. On the third day, she looked out of the back door and saw a coach and four coming along the road. Well, quoth the old woman, yon's for you. So... They took her in, and off they set. The third daughter says to her mother, Mother, bake me a bonnock and roast me a collop, for I'm coming away to seek my fortune. Her mother did so, and away she went to the old witch. She bade her look out the back door and see what she could see. She did so, and when she came back, said she saw nothing. The second day, she did the same and saw nothing. The third day, she looked again and on coming back said to the old wife, she saw but a great black bull coming crooning along the road. Well, quoth the old woman, the odds for you. On hearing this, she was next to, distra next to distracted with grief and terror, but she was lifted up and set on his back, and away they went. I gotta be honest. The first two, they're more than welcome to get in a coach, but the third one isn't willing to get on the back of a bull. I gotta be honest. If you told me a bull coming, eh, I can kind of see that. Yeah, I kind of do see that. Yeah, a bull would be a little bit terrifying, but I don't know if it's grief-stricken, but I ah, will. That's... Whatever it is, she's scared, and I get it. Um, I they traveled and on they traveled till the lady grew faint with hunger. Eat out of my right ear, says the black bull, and drink out of my left ear, and set by your leaving. So she did as she said, as he said, and was wonderfully refreshed. And long they rode, and hard they rode till they came in sight of a very big and bony castle. Now see, I'd be scared of that bony castle, but when a bull tells me you eat out of my one ear and drink out of my left ear and it tastes good, I know I'm all good then. So I don't know what she was scared about. Now she should be terrified though. Yonder, we must be this night, quoth the bull, for my elder brother lives yonder and presently they were at the, pla the place. They lifted her off his back and took her in and sent him away to a park to park for the night. In the morning, when they brought the bull home, they took the lady into a fine shining parlor and gave her a beautiful apple, telling her not to break it till she was in the greatest strait. Greatest strait ever mortal was in the world, and that would bring her out of it. Again, she was lifted on the black bull's back, and after she had ridden far, and farther than I can tell, they came in, they came in sight 
of a far bonier castle and far farther away than the last. Says the bull to her, Yonder we must be this night, for my second brother lives yonder. And they were at the, perf at the, at the place directly. They lifted her down and took her in and sent the bull to the field for the night. In the morning, they took the lady into a fine and rich room and gave her the finest pair she had ever seen, bidding her not to break it till she was in the greatest strait ever mortal could be in, and that would get her out of it. Hmm. Sounds like these bulls, like, they got a lot of cool stuff. They can give me, give me a pair, yo, so I can get out of debt. Again, she was lifted and set on his back, and away they went. And long they rode, and hard they rode, till they came in sight of the far biggest castle and far farthest off they had yet seen. We must be yonder tonight, says the bull, for my young brother lives yonder, and they and they were and they were there directly. They lifted her down and took her in and sent the bull to the field for the night. In the morning, they took her into a room, the finest of all, and gave her a plum, telling her not to break it till it was in the greatest straight mortal could be in, and that would get her out of it. Presently, they brought home the bull, set the leader on his back, and away they went. And I they rode, and on they rode, till they came to a dark and upsome, gr and upsome glen, where they stopped, and the lady lightly down, oh, and the lady lighted down. Says the bull to her, here you must stay till I go and fight the old one. You must seat yourself on the stone, and move neither hand nor foot till I come back, else I'll never find you again. And if everything round you turns blue, I have beaten the old one. But should all things turn red, he'll have conquered me. She set herself down on the stone, and by and by all around her turned blue. Overcome with joy, she lifted one of her feet and crossed it over the other, so glad was she that her companion was victorious. The boar turned and sought for her, but never could find her. Long she sat, and I she wept, till she wearied. At last she rose and went away. She didn't know where. On she wandered till she came to a great hill of glass, that she tried all she could to climb, but wasn't able. Round the bottom of the hill she went, sobbing and seeking her passage over, till at last she came to a smith's house, and the smith promised, if she would serve him seven years, he would make her iron shoe, iron shoon, wherewith she could climb over the glassy hill. I tell you this, that sounds more like a hostage than helpful, but I would have just said, all right, let me see the shoes first. And then I would have just gave, I would have snuffed them out, took them shoes and been out. At seven years, at seven years end, she got her iron shoon, cloned the glassy hill, and chanced to come to the old washerwife's habitation. There she was told of a gallant young knight that had given in some clothes all, all over blood to wash, and whoever washed them was to be his wife. The old wife had washed till she was tired, and then she set her daughter at it, and both washed, and they washed, and they washed. In, hope of, in hopes of getting the young knight. But for all they could do, they couldn't bring out a stain. At length, they set the stranger damsel to work. And whenever she began, the stains came out pure and clean. And the old wife made the knight to believe it was her daughter had washed the clothes. So the knight and the eldest daughter were to be married. And the stranger damsel was distracted at the thought of it, for she was deeply in love with him. 
Sounds like this damsel needs to put hands on somebody. So she bethought of her uh, mm, so she bethought her of her apple and breaking it, found it filled with gold and precious jewelry, the richest she had ever seen. All these, she said to the eldest daughter, I will give you on condition that you put off your marriage for one day and allow me to go into his room alone at night. The lady consented, but meanwhile the old wife had prepared a sleeping a sleeping drink and given it to the knight who drank it and never wakened till next morning. Whew, these are some devilish, devilish fiends, but I'll tell you that. The live long night, the damsel sobbed and sang. Seven years I've served for thee, the glassy hill I climbed for thee, the bloody clothes I rang for thee, and wilt thou not waken and turn to me? Next day she knew not what to do but to grieve. Then she broke the pear and found it filled with jewelry far richer than the contents of the apple. With these jewels she bargained for permission to be, to be a second knight in the young knight's chamber. But the old wife gave him another sleeping drink, and again he slept till morning. All night she kept sighing and singing as before. Seven long years I served for thee, the glassy hill I climbed for thee. Thy bloody clothes I rang for thee, and wilt thou not waken and turn to me? Still he slept, and she nearly lost hope altogether. But that day when he was out hunting, Somebody asked him what noise and moaning was that I heard all last night in his bedchamber. He said, I have heard no noise. I bet you haven't. You've been drugged, homies, catching them roofies. But they assured him there, there, but they assured him there was. And he resolved to keep waking that night to try what he could hear. That being the third night and the damsel being between hope and despair, she broke her plum, and it held far the richest jewelry of thee. She bargained as before, and, and the old wife, as before, took in the sleeping drink to the young man knight's chamber. But he told her he couldn't drink it that night without sweetening. And when she went away with some honey to sweeten it with, he poured out the drink, and so made the old wife think he had drunk it. They all went to bed again, and the damsel began as before singing. Seven long years I served for thee, the glassy hill I come for thee, thy bloody clothes I rang for thee, and wilt thou not waken and turn to me? He heard and he turned to her, and she told him all that had befallen her. Oh, and she told him all that had befallen her, and he told her all that had happened to him, and he caused the old washerwife and her daughter to be burnt, and they were married, and he and she are living happily to this day for aught I know. Good for homeboy. Light him up. But thank you for joining me, and until next time, take care.